Thanks for staying up, everybody. Um, you know, we talked about the how much improvement could we make between the first time we played them and the second time we played them, and I think that improvement was obvious, immense. Still got a lot to work on, um, but really proud of our effort, ability to overcome a slow start, hang around and make make some big plays against, you know, uh, arguably one of the top two or three teams in the country on the road. All right, Christina. Yeah, Coach, we talked the other day about how you knew you probably wouldn't be able to out-rebound this team, but you set a goal, you know, percentage-wise. Just what did that goal end up being, and then how were you able to kind of work around that rebounding tonight to, yeah, to we keep did, with that, them? Yeah, we, we didn't do that. That was, again, the difference. I mean, I, Angel uh, cleaned up a bunch of misses. Flaget had a couple of big offensive timely rebounds. Uh, that was just that one area. <laughs> We could have come up with one or two of those 50-50 balls. Uh, could have been a completely different situation. But we, we didn't do a lot better in that area. I think we played better offensively. So it kind of covered some of that stuff up. But they still out-rebounded us by 25. I think she had 13, 13 offensive rebounds by herself. And I think we tried more. I just don't think the result was there. I think our effort was a lot better, and that's why I'm going to be – able to move on to our our next game it might be effort but what did you think was you know the biggest difference between that first game and this one as far as your team and whether it was matchups or performance I, I thought we were better offensively you know I, I thought we were able to punch back uh, and last time we let our defense carry over to the offensive side and we weren't as good on offense I don't know I think our defense was probably worse tonight than it was the first time I really do I'll have to watch it on film, but my gut tells me it was worse because we made a couple of mental mistakes. Like, you know, we'd be standing up yelling, don't get beat outside, and we get beat outside. That's poor coaching. If we're yelling it and they're not doing it. Um, so I, I thought we made some mental mistakes that we didn't make last time. I do think our effort was better, but I, I think mentally – and a lot of that had to do with – I don't if you can sense it on the feed, but – their student body, I don't know how many they had here, but it was vocal, it was honest, it was distracting. Um, it was a really, really tough environment um, and not an excuse, but I think part of the reason that we weren't as good defensively this time. Ethan? Yeah, Coach, um, falling down you know, early right off the bat, and then I think the largest deficit was 14. Just what do you think about your team's resiliency to – I mean, it seemed like, at least on the broadcast, it was pretty loud in there, but they responded whenever those leads got double digits. That's what I do love about them is that they're, you know, they're focused on uh, the next possession. You know, I think we proved that the other night with Mac. You know, we give up the tough three, Mac comes back and fires one. I, I think we've gotten to that next play mentality, and I think that after we calmed down and took a big deep breath after that, you know, that first time out, it was uh, obviously a, a game that we were in control of, except for the first two minutes. So, a lot to be positive. Um, but in our league, you know, there, you know, it's 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 one possession here and one possession there that will keep you awake on the plane at home. And and when you get home, I know everybody will find one or two things they think they could have done better, and then collectively makes up the difference. But um, I'm I'm not going to be too hard on ourselves. Because again, I think this, I think LSU is is one of the best teams in the country, and we're just not far off. And then, um, was it an emphasis? You know, the second half seemed like y'all were just really taking it to the rim, and y'all had 34 points in the paint. It wasn't really post ups, it was a lot of drives. Just, um, was that an emphasis to kind of open things up? Yeah, uh, I, I felt like once we got Angel in a little bit of foul trouble, it's going to be a little easier to get to the rim, a little less uh, resistance protecting it. But, yeah, putting them in some actions to where, you know, we were moving it and then reattacking. They're so hard to go on your first action. Like, if you call a set play that it's the first action, they're really good at guarding that. But if, if you can make a move two or three times, I thought our movement was better. I thought we, we, we just got the ball taken from us about four times in the first half. Like, we'd be standing there and they'd just pop it loose. We, we eliminated that in the second half, got a little bit more aggressive, uh, valued the ball a little bit better. But it was talked about. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to talk about it. One thing to go out there and do it. And I think our guards did it. Aaron did it. Um, and, and that I think is what, where we got, got kind of in the flow a little bit better. And last thing I got is just, um, both teams came in one and two in the country. Free throws attempted. Um, they got to the line a lot more, but y'all shot 10 of 11 
in a really tough environment. Just what do you think of the focus there? We're getting better at it. You know, it's something we, we have been poor at, and we know we've got to be better at it. we got to continue to get there more. Um, they just do a tremendous job of not fouling. I don't know that there were any extra fouls that, um, you know, we're probably not going to get any um, releases tomorrow about fouls that weren't called or something like I saw going around today. But um, I do think our kids are improving in that area. They're working at it. Uh, if we keep doing that, if we can do this on the road in this environment, uh, this is a team that uh, we'll all be proud of, re regardless of how the results continue to take care of themselves. If we keep playing this hard, the good things will keep happening for us. Any more, Ethan? That was it for me. Cool. Jordan? Coach, I know there are no moral victories, but to play a team this close that's this good, are there any uh, sort of positive things that you're taking away from this game? You know, you haven't been here long enough to know. I believe in them. I think there are moral victories. I think a lot of people say that, but if you're in that locker room every day, there are such things as those. Um, there's not a there's not a such thing as it leading to a win column, but our kids have got to feel good about the improvement we made in 21 days. And we talked about that because it was there was a butt whipping up there. It wasn't it wasn't close. So our improvement can be celebrated. And it can it can lead to good morale. It's not going to lead to a victory, but I think if I miss the opportunity to celebrate that with them, I think we're missing out on a chance to to learn as a team. So, I mean, I I think if you ask people around the country, I think most people look around and say that's a good effort by Arkansas. I hate that we lost. Don't get me wrong, but. I'm glad that we battled more than we did the last time we played them. And just 21 days ago, again, this we're not talking about two months. So we're talking about 21 days, the improvement that we've made. If we work that hard and improve that much in the next 21, if we get a chance to see them again, maybe we can battle them on a neutral floor. And last time we talked about your one-on-one -on -one defense in the post, you talked about your guards sort of getting in there and poking it free. How did you feel your guards performed in that aspect today? really good at times, and then other times we simply forgot to go do it. And every time that we forgot to go do it, it ended up in something bad happening for us. So uh, whether that's conditioning or whether I need to rest them more, sub a little bit more, when we're when we're right, when we do things like we've worked on in practice, we, we can guard anybody. But there were a number of times tonight that we just didn't do the right thing, and they made us pay every single time that we made a, a mental error. But, I, again, I can't – I can't ask Aaron, I can't ask Miriam, I can't ask Sailor to play any harder than they did. I can just ask us to play a little bit better. Dudley? You know, after that start, can you just talk about their mental toughness, uh, not only in the first half, but the second half? I mean, easily could have gotten blown out and then didn't just stay in their fault. That's why I love this team so much, is because they've got that in them. They, they really uh, together developed that. Hey, if, if we stick together and keep doing the right things, results will take care of themselves. Uh, I, I've been a part of too many teams that after that first start, it would have just blown out and gone. That's not in this team. So I think we can go into any environment. That's why we continue to challenge them with tough stuff in the non-conference so we would be ready for that because we've got to, you know, we go from this place to South Carolina on Sunday and it's just going to be more people and louder. Uh, but the, to know that our kids uh, stick together and they fight for each other, uh, and they fight together. Um, I, that that's a really that's a pleasing thing for co a coaching staff uh, when your kids respond to stuff like that. Appreciate it. You got it. Is that Randy? Yeah, over there on the left. I, I know. I'm trying to figure this computer out. <laughs> hey, Mike, talk about that uh, sequence there with about six seconds left. You go with Sam on a drive to the basket. Maybe rather than playing for the three, you're down by three. Yeah. He drives, gets fouled, makes two of the free throws, but you're still down by one. Yeah. We're such great half court shooters, Randy. You know, we proved the other night. Uh, we were trying for a quick two and then a foul. Just to, to me on the road, you try to string that thing out. That play had two prongs. It had Sam to drive it if she thought she could score, which she did, or there was a peel back three for the tie. So it had both prongs, depending on how they defended it. But I thought with that amount of time left, we had a chance to uh, score, keep it a one possession. They're a good free throw and shooting team, but 
not great. So we wanted to give ourselves the chance just to lengthen that game out as long as we could. Um, you know, it's something I learned from from talking to different coaches. When you're on the road, try to make the game last as long as you can. And um, Aaron, we, we did run that play for Aaron to hit shoot the three. She's been shooting it really good, and she got a great look at it. It just didn't go in. That was our chance. That was our try to tie it. And then after that, we were going to go two for one if we could. Talk about the defense. Did you consider any kind of gimmick type of defense, to slow Angel down? I mean, uh, whether it be some kind of matchup zone or uh, could you borrow a wall from somebody and take it yeah. out there? Because, I mean, uh, she was just a, a – I don't know what what beast inside the lane tonight. She has been for a long time. You, you can do an awful lot, and then there's some things you just can't do. Uh, I, I From watching teams, Randy, I think teams that try that, they end up wasting a whole bunch of time, and they end up with about the same result. Uh, and, I, and I think it takes away from the confidence of your team. I thought we guarded them good. Now we can carry that over and say, let's do that against the rest of our opponents. If it were a one-game deal, like if we were in a tournament or something and it was a one-game deal, maybe you consider that. Maybe you consider not guarding somebody and double-teaming her every time. But I don't know that that makes us better, which is what we're talking about. And if I if I go in and I put in a defense that we hadn't worked on all year, I, I, think, I think you lose a little bit of credibility and you get out of alignment that, hey, this is one game and it stings to lose. But it did make us better for when we play – X, Y, and Z the rest of the way out. Had we gone in and done something that doesn't work against those guys, then we waste an opportunity. And I'm just, um, you know, I don't care about our win-loss record. I never have. Um, if you keep challenging yourself and you keep playing your stuff, it it, it catches up for you in the long run. Um, but if we had a one game, if we play them in one game in the tournament, I may call you and see what kind of uh, geometric shape <laughs> – you can maybe a rhombus in one or a, an octagon in one or something. Uh, I'm more simple than that. How about a diamond in one? Diamond. There we go. Uh, I am in the moral victories. Good. And, and I will say this, that under those conditions tonight, that atmosphere, a moral victory, nothing wrong with that, because that maybe was one of the better college crowds I've seen in a while. It was amazing. They fed their students. I don't know what they fed them out there, but they were here early. And they were on us respectfully. They didn't. They didn't cross the line. They made a difference in the game. We're gonna. We're gonna steal some ideas and try to get a game like that in Bud Walton. Uh, but they were here early. They're, they're. You know, Coach Mulkey has revitalized their stu their fan base uh, to where it really got loud in there tonight. We we couldn't hear each other calling ball screen coverages. Uh, we had to echo. Uh, we had to change our substitution policies the way we were doing it. it the crowd impacted the game. What was the final score? We lose by three. I'd tell you they were worth three points. Yes. Very much so. Thanks, Mike.